Uh, hello mọi người, mình là Phong đến từ Coi 68 và mình đang ở đây tại sự kiện của GM Việt Nam và ngồi cạnh mình ở đây ngày hôm nay là Melody Hơ là co-founder và partner của Spartan, Spartan Group. Uh, nếu mà các bạn có quan tâm đến thị trường crypto thì chắc là cũng ít nhiều đã nghe đến cái tên này rồi và may mắn là ngày hôm nay chúng ta ở đây có được một trong những gọi là Tier One, Tier One VC in the industry và mình sẽ hỏi một số kiến sai và mong là các bạn có thể có một những cái giá trị, uh, những cái điều có thể học hỏi được từ Melody trong cái uh, buổi trò chuyện ngày hôm nay. Uh, so first, uh, the first question, can you introduce a bit about youth and also Spartan as well? Yeah, of course. Hi everyone, thanks for having me and thanks for uh, hosting us today. I'm very excited to be back in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, yeah, my name is Melody. I am one of the co-founders of Spartan Group. Um, we are um, uh, we are quite unique um, in um, the investment space because we don't only do investment. We also do advisory and venture building. Um, we created a platform that can cater to any stage of um, the. Um, the startup founders, whether you are only having an idea, you want to find a, a partner to go build, or you need to seek funding, or a Series A early stage, or you are a later stage company, you want to launch your tokens, or even sell your companies, um, we can we can be helpful. Yeah. That's really awesome. So, uh, how, how do you feel like about everything about Vietnam? This is the first time you come to Vietnam? Or? No, um, I've been here 17 years ago. Yes, <laughs> before all of you uh, <laughs> or adults. <laughs> um, no, it's just, uh, it has changed a lot. I um, hardly recognized it other than the center of the city. I think I remembered a little bit. Um, I mean, Vietnam has grown so much and it's such an important community for um, many of the ecosystems because of the engineers you guys have and you know whether it's gaming, um, I mean one of the biggest companies right from last cycle Ronin Space here and it's really brought the entire um, gaming and um, uh, Web3 gaming industry right to to the attention of um, traditional games and Web3 so I think it's, it's, a, it's a very high energy like I love it. And as you can see like, around right, uh, I think People are still. Uh, people are saying that we are mid of the bull market in the in the, in the bull run. Yeah. So I think everyone is really excited about everything happen. But like from Spartan point of view, like you guys are one of the people who have the front seat role when seeing things grow in the industry. So from your point of view, like what are the the key thing, the key trend, the key tendencies uh, that are happening around the market that will potentially be the next big thing in the crypto space? So that's. Uh, I, mean, I wish I can predict. Um, what is the next uh, big narrative coming in? But if you compare this um, cycle, um, it has mostly been driven by the institutional adoption of crypto, um, less on new use cases, um, compare, or less on consumer new use cases. So last cycle, if you recall, we had NFT, right? We have gaming, we have a bit of social. So it was quite exciting um, new use cases, uh, uh, disrupting old business models and industries. That ha We haven't seen that played out as much this cycle. So this cycle is mo it's a bit boring, to be honest. Um, in a way, it's very exciting because you have the ETF approvals, right? You are seeing that uh, institutional capital from especially the US, it's warming up again, right, towards crypto. Um, so it could be that we're seeing some uh, bigger um, IPOs, whether it's a circle or maybe some other more institutional focused um, crypto companies can go public. That will be a huge catalyst. Um, but yet you haven't seen actually big consumer adoption, right? Like all the things that we thought would happen Gaming. It's pretty much like becoming the financial market, the subsidiary. Yeah. yeah, so in a way I'm a little bit like, it's getting a bit boring, right? You, you only have the ETFs and then you have the infrastructure. And then, but you don't have any real consumer adoption yet. So I think everybody is waiting for something to happen there. Yeah. So is that is that's one of the things that key criteria for Spartan when they're looking for the investing project and support project? So consumer or like are there any other key like criteria that you want to looking for a support project? Um, no, we don't uh, limit ourselves in where we what we only do, what we don't do. Best founders are grassroots, they have grassroots ideas, right? They have homegrown ideas. So you, you're open-minded to speak to all kinds of founders and then they will tell you insights on what they're building and why it's exciting and why it makes sense. And then we decide to invest in founders that are doing that and solving problems in that aspect. We don't like pretend we know what's gonna be the next, right? 
So it's pretty much about human resources, the people who build the project. Bottom, it's more bottom up. We have a thesis, general thesis, right? But still, like, the successful founders come from the least expected industry sectors, places. So we keep an open mind. Yeah. So yeah, when when they're talking like the project builder is is out there, uh, maybe they are, they're watching it, and maybe they're around the, the venue itself. Um, what what are some advice that you can give to them when it comes to like building a project in this circle? In I think every circle is 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 so different here, right? Uh, the, the last circle defined summer, again five summer, and this circle from your point of view, like what are the advice that you can give to project builder? Well, as a founder to start a company now, you do have to think what kind of adoption can happen in probably two years time, right? Because how long does it take you to build? It takes a while from you starting to raise capital, right? from an idea, raise capital, and the, you know, try things, pivot, right? So two to three years time is probably when you can actually see some real traction. And maybe three, four years later, you, can, you might be able to exit, right? That's like a standard timeline. Some people can do it faster if they're lucky. But that's not some assumption you should have, right? So I'm hoping I'm speaking to the people who want to build for the long term, not just like building a small thing and you know get some money and leave. So for the ones who want to build the, the long term thing, it's very fun fundamental. Like what big problems you are seeing, you're passionate about, you can solve, you know, with Web3, right? With tokenization, with um, the the beauty of you know, having a token in the hands of the community, right, so they can do things for you. I mean, is the industry you are solving ready for that, right? Because if you think about it, I think another reason why a lot of infrastructure are still being built out is many of the consumer applications haven't really achieved consumer recognition or they haven't really figured out a real business model how to rebuild it on the token. So maybe the infrastructure needs to be even better Right, the regulation needs to be even more um, open-minded for actual consumer applications time to come. So you have to think about it like, you know, if you need adoption to show traction within the next six months, you might not be able to get there. So uh, just to follow up with that, so do you think like, uh, we, we used to have a chance, like we have the, the layer one like Ethereum and so DeFi summer and then the game five booming. But but then well, one thing we have to admit to each other that like the, um, the longevity, the, the lifetime of the game fight yeah. is really low, yeah. only three to six months, yeah. and and a lot of incidents happen in the industry. So, by I don't you think that the people are rushing in building the, the consumer app, the consumer application, That's, but the foundation is not that ready yet. And then for for this circle, that's why in this circle you, we see a lot of like project building in the infrastructure, the layer two and other stuff, and that could be the step stone for building the consumer, how do you think that that will, have, that will happen in the future? I think first of all, if you are, we're just talking about games, you have to know most games also have three to six months life, right? It's just because now you're talking about we paying, right? Buying a game tokens, so you become an investor, that you're realizing, oh, like the lifespan of a game might be there, but very short. But traditionally, it's just game studios that launch their own games, and if they fail, they don't have a token holder to answer to. Yeah. So you don't know, actually, you're not tracking yeah. right, their lifespan. So even for traditional games or small mobile games, like they don't have a very long lifespan anyways. Um, so token might actually help to ex extend that, that lifeline, right? Because now you hold their tokens, you have their NFTs. Um, so I do think you cannot just compare an L1 project to a game project and just you know, say that's a total fail. Um, because it's a different type of product. Um, and in terms of whether the infrastructure is ready and then the games will come or the, the product will come, um, I think it's, it's always like a go hand in hand, right? Like you build infra for a while and everybody's building infra, the infra's good enough and there will be more. Um, and then it's engineers are, are funny people. They're like, if I can stretch technology to that, I would do it just for the sake of being like doing it fun and experimenting with technology. So I do think that whatever the tech that we can build, applications will try to like use whatever use case they can come up 
with, right, to, to build the consumer apps. And back from, back from the beginning, we are saying that uh, there's a bull market and I can see that from, from my point of view, there's a lot of newcomer in the market uh, as right now. So from your point of view, like you have been through multiple circles with pretty much veteran. So what are the piece of advice that you can do, uh, can, can give to some of the people who just like know about, uh, just joined the market like several months ago uh, and <laughs> several months ago. For, uh, for the retail user, like what do they need to know and how they control uh, the, the grid? when jumping into the financial market like crypto? When they control the risk? Uh, yeah. Risk. Um, if you're new, I uh, definitely recommend, um, first of all, um, if it's too good to be true, it probably is, right? Don't buy things that um, people tell you, oh, it's like a, such a good deal, only you know, like you know that's not true. Um, I would, based on your preference and you are your experience, pick a lane that you actually understand and in, be interested in, whether it's a game, right, whether it's a social, uh, whether it's infra, right, whether even sometimes are uh, some of the platform, right, tokens. You do uh, your work, right, to do your research, um, but form your opinions, right, and um, uh, pick a few lanes that you're very good at and start from there. Um, yeah, and um, it's very difficult to cover um, all the different verticals um, uh, in crypto. So, you know, try to pick something you're really good at. Yeah. Yeah, even even from for myself, like I'm the one who working full time in crypto, but it's really hard to catch up like with everything Me news. Too. Me too. I can. I'm like I'm getting a snippet like sometimes, right? And you're not really. And then the, the industry moves so fast, like the meme coin thing. Like my team is playing around with a ton and that the tongue network uh, applications. I'm like, why is this the even? Telegram one. The Telegram ones, right? So I think it's, it's really hard to keep up with the latest one, but don't get FOMO on the latest thing. And, and, I, and I think also like the, the people should not try to like know everything, right? Just know the, what, what works for you and then what don't, and then they can come up with that as well. There's yeah. always money to be made, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, just like fun, funny things that uh, before you, I talked with like uh, Alex from Nansen. Yeah. yeah, he's also like uh, saying that, uh, saying that like uh, in order to like um, making uh, making profit in the market, you have to stay in the market long enough in order to cover that. And he also uh, said the same idea with you, like there are always money to, to, to yeah. be made. No, no, no need to be rushed. Yeah, for sure. Like every, um, every vertical um, and every field in crypto have good companies and bad companies, right? So figure out what, uh, why they're good, you know, whether it's a team, whether it's a project, whether it's a roadmap, whether it's a tech, right? You have to understand why you're excited about it. Yeah, thank you for really uh, insightful sharing. Just one one last question. Like, uh, what what do you want to say for the Vietnam community? Like, uh, what are you uh, expectation for the builder in here so that we can like have some exciting? Yeah, I mean, keep building, right? Um, keep trying new things, and don't worry if you fail, um, because you are you know failing with the community, <laughs> uh, failing in the in the open, and take whatever you learn, right? Apply it to the next uh, project and product. Um, and also, if you can, right, join a good community, join a good platform. The beauty of it is um, every, almost every blockchain project needs to have a global strategy, right? And everyone needs a local community. So if you can bring value to a big project uh, or a really good um, team, you can grow with a team. Um, you know, the, you can actually really become, be, be, be your own entrepreneur, like be your own, um, kind of be owning your own faith, right? Like, because um, there's so many communities can be built. So yeah, keep building. Yeah, thank you for a really insightful yeah. sharing and thank you for being here with us today. Of course, yeah, yeah. thanks for having me. Yeah, all right, thank you. And have a nice day. Have a nice time in Vietnam thank as well. You.